Hi, this is Raimu. This series is going to be teaching you how to program in Rust, one step at a time. You don't need to know anything about programming before this course, but if you do, it might help. I'm going to be using Linux and Visual Studio Code. If you prefer Vim, I won't hold it against you. There's still going to be things that you'll learn from this series even if you don't use Visual Studio Code. Everyone has different preferences and modalities of learning, so if this series isn't right for you, that's fine. So what is Rust? Rust is a general purpose programming language, like it says here on their website, a language empowering everyone to build reliable and efficient software. So what do you need to get started with Rust? Obviously you need a computer. You also need basic familiarity with web browser, with a text editor, and with your shell or command line. And one more thing that you'll need, motivation to learn. You're going to get stuck, you're going to have problems. As long as you have something motivating you, you'll push through it. Now hopefully you have all those prerequisites down, so let's get started. I like to start with rustup.rs because depending on what operating system you're running on, it'll have instructions on what you need to do. For Linux, it's just this line that we need to run in our shell. So we're going to copy this, paste it into our shell, and run it. So this is downloading rustup, the installer for Rust. It tells us what it's going to be doing. So it's going to be installing Rust and all of the different commands that come with Rust in our bin directory. It's going to be updating our path environment variable and it's going to be installing the stable build of Rust. So usually we just hit one enter, proceed with the installation defaults. So I'll explain more about what Cargo, Clippy, Rust FMT, all these things are in this and later videos, but we're taking this one step at a time, right? First, we're going to get the tools and we're going to show you how to make your first Rust program. All right, now you might be tempted to just go on from here and you're gonna run into a problem because if we type rust up or cargo, it'll be like command not found. Well, it does say here, you may need to restart your current shell and that's true for us in Linux. So let's close our shell and open a new one. Now rust up and cargo actually do what we want. A little bit more about rust up before we get into our first rust program. Type rust up without any arguments, you'll see it does have some subcommands. Some of them are pretty interesting, like update. Rust up update is what you're going to run whenever you need to update the version of Rust that you have. Let's say you haven't touched Rust in a month or two months and you're behind. Rust up update gets you back up to the latest version. Uh, Rust up tool chain and default are what you'd use to download alternate versions of Rust and to pick between them. And if you get tired of Rust, Rust self uninstalls what you want. <laughs> okay, so let's make our first Rust program. I'll explain more about what these commands do later, but just to get started, let's type cargo new part one. And it's done. This part one, you should see now if we go into a part one directory, if I can type, and then we can open this folder in VS Code. And yes, I trust it. All right, so it gave us three files to start with. Now these three files came from a template which Cargo New gave us. Before we look into those files, let's see what it does. Let's try to build it and run it. So Cargo Run. Now, if you're like me and you have just started with Rust on a platform where you have nothing else installed, you may run into this for Linux, for example, and you might Google search this like I did. It turns out that Rust has a few prerequisite tools that it depends on that most systems have, but fresh systems might not. On Linux, the way you install those prerequisites is sudo apt install build essential. So we're going to get that out of the way. So your, your mileage may vary on other operating systems. You might not need to do a step like this, or you might have to do something different. Generally, if you've done programming before on your computer, you won't need to do anything. Rust will already have everything it needs. So now that we have that prerequisite squared away, if I do cargo run, it compiles and runs our program. Let's take a look at our program. And here it is. Very simple three-line program. We'll get into the syntax in the next video. I want to dive a little bit into what the files were that it gave us, what cargo is. So Cargo is Rust's package manager. Why is it named Cargo? Because it deals with packages and crates. A package in Rust is a collection of crates. 
It also has a one-to-one -one correspondence with a Git repository, usually. And it's a unit of distribution of your software. A crate is something like a program, a library, etc. So in general, two kinds of crates. One is a binary, which would be a program, app, or an, another, the other kind of crate is a is a library, a .lib, .dll, .dilib, etc. A library, in general, is a reusable piece of a program that you make because you plan to reuse it in many programs. So think of it as a building block for making a program. Large programs typically have dozens, if not hundreds, of libraries that go into it. So in general, a package can have zero or one library crate or, and zero or more binary crates. So why is that? It's because in Rust, a library generally encompasses the entire collection of code that you have. And binaries are usually seen as supporting that library. So about the binaries that you distribute with your Rust package could be examples or they could be a command line interface, but that's essentially the reason. So in the case of cargo new, what it gave us is a package with one binary crate that just prints hello world when we run it. Let's look at this a little deeper. So in addition to the main program that it gave us, it also gave us this cargo.toml file. Now toml is a markup language. Essentially, this file is a manifest. It represents the package. It has all the metadata about the package, like the package's name, what version number we want to give to the package, what edition of Rust, and what kind of other packages we depend upon. So let me take a little bit of a diversion here to update my environment so that we can look at the cargo toml file more easily. I like to use better toml. So we're just going to search for that and install it. Now, when I go back and look at our toml file, it's syntax highlighted. Cargo new also gave us a git ignore file because in general, a Rust package has a one to one correspondence with a git repository. They expect that you're going to check in this package into a git repository and they've conveniently made a git ignore file for you. Now, I'm not going to get into too much of git in this video. Suffice to say that the git ignore file tells the version control system what files that we don't really need to check in. And all the files under the target folder we can ignore and not check in because those are all the files that are generated when we build the program. So when we run cargo run or if we do cargo build, in the target folder under debug, we'll actually find the program that's built. We could actually run it if we type target debug part one. Hello world. The other files here are all intermediate products that went into making our program. So in summary, we installed all of the Rust tools. We made our first Rust program and explored a little bit about what packages and crates were. In the next video, we're going to get into what functions and modules are and write a little bit more code and explain a little bit more. So again, the series is all about learning it step by step. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time.